Well, my son Andrew was um, diagnosed with a heart condition about two years ago, and it was a very sudden diagnosis. We were rushed here with Andrew via ambulance, and initially they told us he would need a defibrillator and a, and a pacemaker, but within two weeks of that, they were then saying, no, his heart is even worse. We need to do a transplant immediately. I remember thinking, not my Andrew. He played soccer just a couple weeks ago. How is this possible? I remember lying next to him in the ICU and he said to me, Mom, I want to go home. I'm not sick. We got a call in the middle of the night saying that there was a heart available for him. I walked with him and stood with him while they got him ready and put him to sleep. <sighs> Nothing prepares you for that. And when he was finally asleep, that was one of the hardest times because I had to leave. And you look at your child and you wonder, is this the last time I'm going to see you? The operation took about eight hours. And the doctors came in and talked to us and said, the heart is in and it's beating perfectly. It's beautiful. Those are just the best words you can possibly hear at that point. But an hour later, I got to go into the ICU and see Andrew. It was pretty scary to see. It was amazing how fast he recovered. They uh, had him discharged within 15 days of a transplant. And within eight and a half weeks, he was actually skiing on Gross Mountain. You know, he was able to get back and do all his normal stuff. And yeah, then everything got crazy again for us. Andrew's highly unusual story was about to get even more bizarre. A heart transplant saved Andrew Westerland's life in January 2013. He was just the third patient ever to get a new heart at BC Children's Hospital. Andrew recovered quickly and got back to normal life. But 19 months later, his health suddenly took another unbelievable turn. He uh, went in for a routine checkup with his cardiologist and the whole transplant team. And everything was normal. And then the cardiologist said, uh, how long have these lumps been here? And I said, well, I don't know. I just noticed them just now. There were three other cardiologists in the room and all three of them suddenly jumped up and were checking out my son. Lightning had struck 14-year-old Andrew a second time. Andrew was diagnosed with a form of lymphoma that one to two percent of transplant patients can develop. And so he's been going through the chemo ever since. Andrew, like all transplant patients, was already a frequent flyer at Children's Hospital. His cancer diagnosis meant even more specialized care. Heart-wise, feeling good. We're probably at about 16 different departments within the hospital that Andrew sees. We never really know for sure how long we're gonna be at the hospital. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's arrive at eight o'clock and you don't know if you're going home that night or not. So you bring packed bags in the trunk and you wait and find out if you get to go home that day or not. Hi, Andrew, I'm Nikki. Get you to come in and have a seat in the chair. As Andrew came to the end of his chemo treatments, his health journey took yet another strange turn. Blood tests revealed a likely connection between all of his medical issues, including the hearing loss he suffered when he was young. Andrew has just today been diagnosed with a very rare autoimmune disorder that uh, only about 200 people in the world have. 
his hearing loss, his heart condition. The cancer, to some degree, could be attributed to it. For now, Andrew's prognosis is uncertain, but the team at BC Children's Hospital will always be there for the boy who has already survived a heart transplant and cancer. Children's Hospital has given us more time to do what we wish to do. Children's Hospital has given us our family. Without the hospital, Andrew would not be here.